Hey everybody, it's Mom 2 Wife 1. Thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel. I know it's been a while and I know that you guys have, I don't know if you guys have or not, I'm going to assume because I know you guys watch me and you follow me because you clicked on this video, you know exactly who I am, you know what I normally talk about. I know you guys are probably wondering or at least curious why I haven't posted any content about Married at First Sight. Whether you guys watch the show or not, it's been on a hiatus for a long minute. I don't know if it's because of the writer's strike. I'm assuming that's it. That's things a strong possibility. So the show is officially back. And I have to admit, I have been going back and forth on whether or not I really want to watch the show. A lot of times the way I gauge how invested I am in a show is if it goes on hiatus, do I miss it? Am I craving it? Am I thinking about it? Do I go back and watch reruns because I miss it? If I realize, oh, I haven't seen the show in a couple of weeks and I'm not bothered by it, then it's like, okay, well, maybe it's run its course. And we're married at first sight. I don't even know what season we're on, 17, 25, 85. I'm not sure. But I know that I've watched it for a very long time. I've been doing these videos for probably the past maybe three or four seasons. And while I love engaging with you guys and I love the engagement I have with my mother and my uncles all over the age of 65, mind you, and the text that we have about this show is very amusing for me. I just don't know if my heart's really in it. And I told my mother this and she's like, no, you can't. You, you got us all into the show. You have to keep watching the show. And your people online, they want to see it too. They want to hear what you have to say. I don't know how true that is. You guys have plenty of content to watch on YouTube. I love you guys for tuning in to my channel anytime I post anything. So I'm going to watch this season. I don't know how excited I'll be about it, but I decided, I, I think I decided I'm going to do it. Either way, this video is about the matchmaking special that was aired last Wednesday, which was October 4th. And so this season of Married at First Sight, they are located in Denver, Colorado. And actually, before I even get started, my apologies. If you are clicking on this video for the first time or clicking on my channel for the first time, hi, I'm Mama to Wife of One. I'm a content creator. I'm a mommy. I'm a wife. I am an author. I'm a literary editor. I'm a lot of different things all rolled into one. But a lot of times I like to talk about TV, I like to talk about books, I like to talk about random things that I'm learning as I navigate motherhood, as I navigate marriage, as I navigate just growing older. I'm 41, I'll be 42 now in less than a month. Scorpio season is almost upon us. And yeah, I just talk about things that I care about. So Married at First Sight, you guys are not familiar with the show. And if you watch anything on my channel, you should be familiar with it now, but I'm going to talk about it. Married at First Sight is a show that comes on Lifetime. It's a reality television program. And the premise is these three experts go to a city. This season is Denver, Colorado. They go to the city and they ask the singles of Denver, Colorado, hey, how many of you guys are tired of being single? Who wants to get married? They have to fill out this really long survey. They go through lots of interviews and evaluations, like, from a pastor, from a therapist or a psychotherapist, and from a sex therapist. And they just talk about their past relationships and talk about what they're looking for in a spouse. And these three experts determine if these people are actually ready to get married. Once it's determined, they take five single men, five single women, pair them into you know couples. Then they go to the women and they say, hey, we found you a match. You were getting married in two weeks. The only thing the woman is told and the man as well is the ring size of the person that they're marrying. That's literally all they know. They don't know what the person looks like. They don't know the person's name. They know nothing. They meet the person at the altar. And after they get married, they immediately have a wedding night. They immediately go to a resort or wherever for a honeymoon for seven days. And then they come back and all five couples, typically now, live in the same apartment complex for eight weeks. After the eight weeks, they decide if they want to stay married or if they want to get divorced. And the cameras follow them through living with the persons for some of them for the first time, meeting each other's families and friends, and just ingraining this perfect stranger into your life and figuring out what it means to you to be a wife and to be a husband. So last Wednesday, we had the matchmaking special where the three experts got together and actually looked at the surveys and did home visits and all that stuff. So I took down some notes of things that I noticed just from the matchmaking special. Number one, if you have watched any of my channel, watched the past two seasons of Married at First Sight, you'll know that, again, three experts are the ones who do these interviews. Is Dr. Pepper, is Pastor Cal, and it used to be a woman named Dr. Viviana who's a sex therapist who was great. I loved her. She left the show. 
So once she left the show for like two or three seasons in a row, they just had Dr. Pepper and Pastor Cal, and then they brought on a couple of the experts towards the middle of the show to come in and help the couples with whatever they were going through. And I kept saying, it doesn't make sense to bring them in in the middle where things are already turn to ish you need to kind of get them at the very beginning so i've been saying that for the past two seasons and somebody watched this video and were like you know what let's tell the show this because this is a great idea from this woman named mom who's the wife of one so now they brought on one of the experts dr pia and she's there from the very beginning for the matchmaking special she's a black woman sex therapist beautiful and knows her stuff so i was so happy to see that she was there from the very beginning that made me so so happy like yes y'all listen to me so she was there that was my first note Second note, which I thought was very interesting. This is the first time when I've seen them do a home visit, and I guess because it's in Denver, that one of the women had a bong just kind of sitting out. I just thought it was funny. I was like, oh, there's a bong in Lifetime. I just never thought I would see that. I thought that was very interesting. And one of the men they visited, he does collagen shots. I was like, okay. that Literally, my notes are very random. It was like, man, who does collagen shots? That's literally what my note says. And they have one of the candidates who was picked for the show who's a therapist. And I thought that that was good because I think that means she's going to be a good listener when it comes to whoever her husband is. But one thing I'm always curious about when it comes to people who are therapists and when it comes to people who are pastors as well, when you are in that position and you're used to listening to people's problems, you're used to kind of therapizing them and helping them get to the root of whatever, are you able to turn that off when you're talking to someone who is not a client? I feel like if you're a therapist, if this woman, she's a therapist, if she gets with whoever her husband is, whatever his personality is, I don't want her to, I want her to be able to turn it off so that she's able to talk to him as a wife and not like she's trying to fix him or help him fix himself. Because I know from, if I'm on the receiving end of that, I'm going to get frustrated and I'm going to kind of feel like I'm not really getting to know you as a person. I'm getting to know you in your profession. So that was not necessarily a red flag, but it's like, mm, okay, I can see that possibly being interesting TV later on and something that she may not even know that she does. So I wrote that down. Uh, there's a black woman on there. This is Denver, Colorado. I've never been to Denver, Colorado. I have no idea how diverse it is, but they had a couple of black women there who made the semifinals. They actually had a black one black man as well. And the black woman talked a lot about how proud she is of her black culture, and she wants to get with someone who understands her culture, or at least understands what it means to be proud of this culture that may not necessarily be mainstream. And I was like, I've never really heard any of the black people on the show. I've never heard them talk about, yeah, my black culture and I'm proud of it. And I was like, oh, they must be doing that specifically because they're in Denver. That's why from the very beginning, she's like, look, this is me. This is what I like. And I think she's basically telling them in no uncertain terms, I prefer a black man. If I don't have a black man, it's okay. But I don't know if I do well with someone who is let's say ancestors possibly oppressed my ancestors like who knows without actually saying those words i kind of got the impression that's what she was trying to let the experts know i just thought that was interesting uh let's see the, they had a man who was a neat freak and they showed a woman who was a hoarder and i don't write their names down but i'm like i'd be really mad if they paired them up like oh well the neat freak you know that means that he's a little uptight so he's with the hoarder that's someone who can encourage him to let loose while he can kind of rein her in and it's like no i hate when they do that. they do that a lot of times on the show where they put people together who seemingly are opposites but they don't call it opposites they call it like oh well no his strength is her weakness and her strength is his weakness or bring them together and they're going to make each other stronger maybe but that's not always the case especially when two people don't know each other now after years of knowing someone after years of marriage that can take place obviously but you're just an experiment for eight weeks there's no guarantee that that is going to take place that takes an immense amount of trust to allow somebody to help you grow in a certain way and there's already going to be so many other obstacles that they have to go through in those eight weeks that I don't think that's the best form of action. That's my personal opinion. I am not an expert. What the heck do I know? But I was like, eh. I also found it funny that during the home visits, Pastor Cal, he'll like, you know, look in the refrigerator. He'll look around or whatever. He doesn't go through anybody's drawers. Dr. Pepper don't care. And Dr. Pia don't either. They were all up in people's drawers and they had the best time ever finding dildos and the girl stuff. And just like, oh, here, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, all right. And just having a good old time. So I love the fact that they were just all on board with that. There's a girl on here. And this makes me mad because she, for me, had two red flags against her. 
It don't matter if she's nice or whatever. They got nothing to do with it. She's 29 years old. Now, if y'all know, if y'all been watching my channel, I have a huge issue with anybody in their 20s signing up for this show. I don't want to hear, oh, I'm just so tired of being single and where are the good men and I'm ready to be a wife and I'm ready to be a husband or whatever. And I know that you guys tell me all the time, like, oh, maybe they want to get married earlier because they're thinking about having kids. I get all of that. I understand that and I understand where you guys are coming from. However, comma, I still do not think that anybody in their 20s should be signing up to get married at first sight with the moniker that I've tried everything. You are in your mother freaking 20s. You have not tried everything. You are a baby still. I don't want to hear that from you. So for me, that's the first red flag that you're 29. The other issue is that she, when she describes herself, she says, I'm 29 years old and I've been single for all 29 of my years. She's never gone past a third or fourth date and she has never had a serious relationship. That's red flag number two. Because we've seen this before from mainly I think men who have been picked for the show who have never had a serious relationship, never been in love, never said I love you to a person. I've said it before and I'll say it again for you guys who are new. This is just a, a quick relationship tip. If you have never been in a serious relationship before, your first relationship should not be marriage. That does not make any sense because the things that you learn in dating someone those skills that you cultivate when it comes to putting someone before you, listening with the intention to learn, not with the intention to respond, um, just dating, period, like hanging out with someone, planning a date, like just things that you get from dating a person. All of those skills are non-existent in someone who has never had a relationship. You've never gone past the fourth date. That means you've never gone through the process really of meeting someone's family, of being a shoulder for this person to cry on, of taking care of somebody when they're sick. You've never had to go through any of that stuff. So the first time you're going through that should not be marriage because you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. Is this what relationships are about? This is so much work. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't think it was going to be like this. No, girl. So that's a huge red flag for me. And it gave Dr. Pepper pause, which I appreciated. Like, yes, Dr. Pepper, I'm glad that you, because she said it, she's never been in a relationship. And that kind of, that worries me a little bit. A little bit, girl. We've seen how disastrous this has been for some of the men who've been on this show. That should not be a thing. So I was irritated already in my feelings when I saw that. Like, girl, absolutely not. And then this other guy, they asked, and also my other issue with that same 29-year-old, is Dr. Pepper asked her point blank, why do you think it is that you haven't gone past the third or fourth date? She, whatever her answer was, was basically like, you know, I want too much or, you know, I think I just kind of was selling myself short and then I'll be like, you know what? No, I deserve more. Whatever her answer was, she didn't hold herself accountable at all. I don't know the girl. I'm not going to say she's like messed up or whatever, but if you haven't gone past the third or fourth date, in all your 29 years, however many men that you've been on dates with, at some point you have to stop and think, okay, what am I doing or not doing that's not allowing this to go on? Am I being too picky? Am I not being honest with myself? Am I demanding too much too soon? Whatever it is, she didn't mention any of that stuff. So in my mind, that means you ain't holding yourself accountable. If you ain't holding yourself accountable with these guys you only going on three or four dates with, how are you going to hold yourself accountable with a marriage? Again, I'm not an expert. What do I know? But that's what I see. And yeah, so this other guy wanted to, like, they asked him, what do you want from a woman from a wife? I want a woman who has really high self-esteem, who thinks a lot of herself, who has a lot of self-love. That's good. That's not a bad thing. I feel like what people are missing, though, when you say you want that, yes, have that on one side that you love yourself and you don't look down on yourself. Very important. But the other part of that is you also want someone who holds himself accountable. You don't want someone who is so full of this quote-unquote self-esteem that they think their ish don't stink. And they think that everyone should be apologizing to them. And they think that they're always the victim because they're perfect. So you need to kind of have that balance of someone who really loves themselves, but also holds themselves accountable when they don't do the stuff they're supposed to be doing. So those are my notes. Like I said, 10 couples or 10 singles and they make them into five couples. The interesting thing that they've never done before in all of my years of watching Married at First Sight, they paired only four of the couples 
the last couple, they picked the man and said, we really got to do right by him. We got to find somebody for him. But they didn't find anybody for him by the time the episode ended. So I don't know if that means that they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and find somebody that make, didn't make it to the semifinals to get him a wife. Or if that means they're going to keep her a secret, I don't know. But if you guys have seen any commercials for Married at First Sight, because I follow them on Instagram, they have been hinting and, you know, dropping these like, oh my gosh, is this drama for Married at First Sight where one of the grooms gets uh, stood up at the altar. And it's like, oh my gosh, this never happened in the Married at First Sight history. <gasps> so I don't know if it's that situation where he, where this, I'm assuming it's the same guy. And probably not that he gets up at the altar, but that they find his wife at the last minute and she doesn't get two weeks like everybody else. I don't know. It just seemed like a lot of drama. I didn't really get it. But as it stands now, the four couples we have, there's a guy named Cameron who is 32. He's paired with a woman named Claire who's 27. Again, 27. Absolutely not. Shouldn't be on the show. Claire's the therapist, though, that I mentioned. And Cameron is a bike shop owner and he's from New Zealand. He has an accent. Whatever. Lauren is 30. She is black. She's the only black girl. She's a federal budget officer, and she's been paired with Orion, who's 26. Again, no, 26, why? Why are we doing this? And a 30-year-old black woman, a 26-year-old man, that's not a lot of years, really, but, you know, that'll be cause for discussion, because I'm sure when she meets him, finds out how old he is, that's going to be one of her talking heads. They pair him with a baby? He's only 26. I don't understand. And that'll be an issue. He's an electrical technician. He's also American Indian. So that was their way of kind of giving her someone that has some flavor to them. He looks white to me, but I think that was the way of like, okay, sis, we couldn't find a black dude. We couldn't find a Latino dude, but here you go. So my American Indian, yay. Yeah. So that's what she got. What is this? I can read my hand right y'all. Austin. Austin is 31 and is in business development and got paired with Becca, who's also 31, who's a wedding photographer. Emily, who's 29, absolutely not. That's the chick I told y'all about, account executive. And again, that's the chick I told y'all about. Dr. Pepper already had some issues or some hesitancy because she never been in a relationship. The one I get picking for the show, it doesn't matter that she's nice. It doesn't matter that, oh, she seems to really want this. Really wanting it and really being ready for it are not the same thing. Most of the time, 100% of the time, they're not the same thing. Trust your gut, Dr. Pepper. Like, you knew this. You know this isn't a good idea. You know this isn't a good idea. She's 29. What are you doing? And then they pair with a 28-year-old. Again, why are you on this daggle show named Brennan, who's a software consultant? Why? I'm Look, one, two, three, four people in their freaking 20s. Y'all should not be on this mofo show. What are you doing? Don't get it. Whatever. And then the fifth couple is a guy named Michael, who's 38, a project manager. We don't know who the heck poor Michael's going to marry. We don't even know if poor Michael's going to get married. But that's what happened in the matchmaking special. They told all the couples, well, everybody, Michael, that oh, we found you somebody, you're getting married, blah, blah, blah. So I believe that the first official episode, I think it's tomorrow or maybe next week. You know, they let they make it stretch well past when it should be over. So my prediction, not for people who are going to stay together because I don't know anybody at all well enough for that. But my prediction is that if the next episode is officially tomorrow, then tomorrow will be the episode where they have former castmates, single and married, and just like, not even married first like experts, but just people who like the show, who will come on and just kind of give their opinion off of the matchmaking special. And it's like, how much can you really say? We don't know anything about these people. We saw them in their home. We may have seen them exercising. Like, we didn't we got small snippets here and there of people. So there's really not a lot to say. But I feel like that's probably going to happen tomorrow. And then the week after that, I'm assuming, is the official, like, we're going to start the weddings episode, I believe. So I'm going to try, you guys. I'm going to give it a try. If I actually start this and I actually start watching episodes and taking those into videos, I'm going to see it through for the whole season. I can promise you that. I don't know if this will be my last time doing this. I'm not sure. There's a lot of other things I watch on TV. I'm a huge documentaries girl, and I don't know why. As sunny as my personality is, I love watching documentaries on murderers. It's just, it fascinates me. But only if the person has been caught. If it's an unsolved murder, I'm not interested. I need to have some closure. But I, I probably won't do videos on those kind of documentaries. A lot of people, not a lot, actually a lot of people probably watch them, but I feel like my audience would be interested in it. But thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you like it, share it, subscribe to my channel, comment below. 
I don't know what you would comment. You can comment, oh, girl, I missed you. Oh, girl, don't stop making these videos. Oh, girl, please let this be the last season that you do. I will take any and all feedback when it comes to doing these videos. So please comment below. And I'll see you guys at some point. If not this week, maybe next week. I still owe you guys a video that I said I was going to do about weddings and the do's and don'ts of planning a wedding, attending a wedding. So I'm going to do that at some point. But yeah, thanks, guys. See you soon. Peace.